Hello, this is Richard Collins, your instructor in ATM 101, Weather and Climate of Alaska at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Welcome to Unit 5, Air Pressure. Today I want to present the fundamental concepts we will be exploring in this unit. This first slide shows two maps. In the lower left map we see the distribution of atmospheric pressure at the sea level in the North Pacific in winter. In the upper right map, we see the distribution in summer. The wintertime and summertime maps are very different. In the winter, there is an obvious area of low pressure over the Aleutian Islands that is colored purple. We call this area the Aleutian Low. This low pressure is associated with the stormy weather that the Aleutians are famous for with strong winds and precipitation. Over mainland Alaska, the pressure is higher and colored yellow and orange. This area of higher pressure is associated with light winds, clear skies, and colder temperatures. In summertime, low pressure forms over the mainland as the summer sun heats the land. This low pressure is associated with the pop-up convection showers that form in the afternoon in the Tanana Valley. The Aleutian Low has completely disappeared. In this unit, we will investigate how pressure patterns determine the weather patterns that influence our lives. This slide presents the main themes of Unit 5. We are focused on answering the question, what is the significance of horizontal and vertical variations in air pressure? To understand pressure, we must also understand the physical structure of gases and how gases behave. Our study of the behavior of gases will allow us to explore the scientific method using the ideal gas law. Our laboratory investigation where we crush soda cans under atmospheric pressure illustrates these concepts directly. Pressure is the force per unit area exerted by a gas or on a gas. Think of a balloon filled with air. The pressure on the outside surface of the balloon is the environmental pressure, PE, due to the weight of air on the balloon that pushes inwards. The pressure on the inside surface, P, is the pressure exerted by the atoms and molecules of the air as they ricochet off the surface and push outwards. If these pressures are equal, the balloon will maintain its size. If P decreases or PE increases, then the balloon will contract as there is a net inward force. If P increases or PE decreases, then there will be a net outward force and the balloon will expand. In our study this semester, we used the concept of balloons to mimic that of parcels of air as they move in the atmosphere. The first scientific barometer was developed in the 1600s. This is the liquid barometer that measures pressure based on the change in height of a liquid column where the weight of the column of mercury is equal to the weight of the atmosphere on the reservoir. As the pressure increases, it pushes more mercury into the column as it can support the weight of a taller column. The top of that mercury column is shielded from the atmospheric pressure by the glass tube. While the concept is straightforward, the instrument is cumbersome and getting a precise measurement requires a lot of effort. The aneroid barometer on the right measures pressure based on the change in volume of a chamber, which acts like the balloon we discussed in slide 3. The last thing to remind you is that different communities use different units to measure pressure. The National Weather Service station measurements are reported in inches of mercury. Surface weather maps show millibars. The general aviation community uses millibars, and Europeans use hectopascal. Fortunately, one millibar equals one hectopascal. As we rise in the atmosphere, the pressure must decrease as there is less air above us, and so the weight of the atmosphere decreases. This fits with what you may have experienced diving into the deep end of a swimming pool, where the pressure increases as you dive deeper and there is more water above your head. Mount Everest Sagarmatha is about 9 kilometers high, and so at its peak the pressure is about 308 millibars, or 30% of the pressure at the surface. So atop the mountain, only 30% of the atmosphere is above us, and 70% is below. Denali is about 6 kilometers high. You can use Table 5.2 of the textbook to determine how much of the atmosphere is above and below us when we stop stand on top of Denali. Air is compressible. As the pressure decreases, the amount of air in a given volume decreases, and so the air is thinner or less dense as we travel upward in the atmosphere. 
99% of the mass of the atmosphere lies below 32 kilometers. As we travel further upward, the air becomes extremely thin, but the density does not reach zero at some defined altitude. This is different from what we expect in a liquid ocean. Thus, at top high mountains, less oxygen is available for humans. This is why Olympic athletes train at high altitude. It forces their bodies to be more efficient and so perform even better at low altitudes. It was a big deal for athletes when the 1968 Olympics were held in Mexico City at a height of two kilometers where the air is only 80% as thick as it is at sea level. At the altitudes in the thermosphere, 50 miles or 80 kilometers above the Earth's surface, the air is extremely thin and molecules collide with each other and other objects very infrequently. Thus the air in the thermosphere does not conduct heat to a thermometer or satellite effectively. While we saw in figure 217 of the textbook that thermospheric atoms and molecules of high kinetic energies and temperatures, the thermosphere is not hot in the conventional sense that we understand it at the surface. At the surface, the air pressure varies horizontally for two reasons. The first reason is that different masses of air have different temperatures and humidities and so have different densities. Drier and colder air masses are more dense, while humid and warmer air masses are less dense. From the map, we see that we can be under denser and heavier dry cold air masses in the Great Plains, where we see an H. Or we can be under less dense and lighter moist air masses in Florida, where we see an L on the map. The second reason is that flows in the atmosphere can cause air to both pile up or converge and pull apart or diverge just like traffic on a highway, where air piles up, the density increases and the pressure increases. In mapping pressure, we map the sea level pressure, not the recorded station pressure. The station pressures which show persistent low pressure over the Rocky Mountains that would have nothing to do with the weather but everything to do with the altitude of the Rockies. For every 100 meters of elevation, we add 10 millibars to the measured station pressure to get the corresponding sea level pressure. We will see later in the course how changes in the horizontal pressure drive the winds. The ideal gas law describes the behavior of an ideal gas in terms of pressure, temperature, mass, and volume at the macroscopic level. The pressure P of a gas equals the product of the mass M, gas constant R, and temperature T divided by the volume V. We can combine mass and volume into density rho and express P as the product of rho, R, and T. Air behaves like an ideal gas. The kinetic theory of gases claims that an ideal gas is a collection of small particles in constant motion where the particle's kinetic energy increases with temperature and the particles bounce off of each other and any surfaces elastically. The theory describes gases at the microscopic level. The ideal gas law, like all physical laws, describes how a gas behaves but does not tell us what a gas is. The bulk measurements of pressure, temperature, mass, and volume can be related to the mass and kinetic energy of the tiny particles that cannot be measured directly. This allows us to do something hugely important in science. We can use the law to predict the behavior of the gas. For example, in the law, if the temperature T goes to zero Kelvin, then mathematically the pressure must fall to zero Pascal. This mathematical result has the following physical meaning. At a temperature of absolute zero, the particles have no kinetic energy, cannot move, and so exert no impact force on each other, and so exert no pressure. No one saw individual atoms and molecules until the 20th century. However, we have been confident that the kinetic theory of gases is correct since measurements have agreed with the ideal gas law over several centuries. We know from the ideal gas law that as pressure decreases, a parcel of air expands. Thus, parcels of air expand as they rise. However, this expansion is not cost-free. It requires that the parcel push back the air around it as it expands. To push the air back, the parcel is doing work, and so it must use up energy. The only source of energy the parcel has is the internal kinetic energy of its atoms and molecules. 
Thus, the parcel uses this kinetic energy to expand, the temperature of the parcel decreases, and the parcel cools. As a parcel falls, it warms, as in this case the pressure is increasing, the atmosphere is doing work on the parcel, and the energy of the parcel increases. The expansion of air parcels as they rise has important consequences for weather balloons. As the balloons rise, they expand and eventually pop, so the balloon can only go so high into the atmosphere. In 1989, I lived at the South Pole for a year and helped launch weather balloons. Ozone hole scientists needed the balloons to rise as high as possible into the stratosphere, so we would bathe the balloons in diesel to make the rubber more stretchy and so travel higher before they popped. I try not to think about what the diesel did to my lungs, another example of things that you do in your 20s. The cooling of rising parcels of air explains how clouds form. As a humid parcel of air rises, the temperature drops and eventually the water vapor condenses into water droplets and a cloud forms. Thus clouds form in rising parcels of air. Air rises in low pressure systems and falls in high pressure systems. Thus we associate cloudy, rainy, stormy weather with low pressure and fair, sunny weather with high pressure. That's why the barometer has rain, change and fair printed on the dial. Closing thoughts and summary. Pressure is due to the weight of air above you and decreases with height in the atmosphere. Air pressure has the same magnitude in all directions. At a given point in the atmosphere, it doesn't just point downwards, it points sideways on an object as well at the same pressure. Air pressure falls faster with altitude in colder, denser air masses. The ideal gas law describes relationships of pressure, density, and temperature at the macroscopic level that allow us to understand gases at the microscopic level. The pressure exerted by air masses varies with their temperature and humidity. Cold, dry air masses are heavier and denser. Pressure is also influenced by air flow and whether air is converging or diverging. And finally, when energy is conserved in a parcel, a rising parcel of air must cool and a falling parcel of air must warm.